You ever wanted to know what would happen if the Texas Chainsaw Massacre got high and stole a car? Well now you can! Now before I begin, I talk about the film's colour balancing a bit in this review, but I've also noticed that, kinda weirdly, the issues are a little less noticeable on my extracted review than on the DVD. At some point in the ripping and converting and rendering and extracting etc, the film got a little less garish looking. So to see what I'm talking about, check out the DVD. Monster Man was made in 2003 and is one of the most 2003 films ever made. Not in tone or subject matter, but in its visuals. You see, in 2003, the digital colour correction post-production tech was finally beginning to make its way into the lower budget end of filmmaking. And as a result, a lot of films made around this time look unusually gaudy. Like they were made by a bunch of kids finally allowed to raid their Halloween halls, gorging themselves until they got sick on pure bright, oversaturated unnatural visuals. I have no comment. And Monster Man was one of the most excited to use a newfangled tech to great slash god awful effect. It's not that often that a film can be dated just for the colour grading alone, but this isn't just any film. This is Monster Man, a film that's equal parts infuriating and entertaining. God awful and fucking amazing. It is what it is. And it's a lot. It's so much that I was banging on about the colour grading for ages and I forgot to mention that the two leads are almost literally wearing teal and orange. I don't know why, but I veer madly between loving this and hating this film every time I see it. And frankly, I'm kind of intrigued about which one I'm going to end up doing this time. You know, like, holy crap, that font is amazing. It's like the early 2000s distilled. If a font was casually homophobic, was really into Friends, and loved new metal, this is exactly what it would look like. If I didn't have the colour grading, I could have dated this from the font alone. But it does kind of look like my old one, so I have to kind of like it. Anyway, we open up with Ben Browder finally getting his comeuppance for Steel Chariots. And an obligatory pithy comment. We've all got a vice. And his is splitting headache jokes. Okay, I realise that that was literally minimal effort on my part, but we never even saw the guy's eyes pop out. It's not exclusively a me problem. You're making it worse. Fade away for fuck's sake. Anyway, nothing like having a dude's head mangled to get you in the mood for disco music, and the human equivalent of a puppy wearing flannel. This This is Adam, played by Eric Youngman, who you might have seen in Not Another Teen Movie. But I hope you didn't, because then you've seen Not Another Teen Movie. And you'll never look at Chris Evans the same way again. But here's Adam's best friend, Harley. You might have seen him in Mars Attacks, Natural Libre, Goosebumps, and the new Jubanji films. Oh, no wait, sorry, that's Jack Black. But in my defense, so is Justin Urich, who plays Harley. <laughs> Talking about skin marks, I bet the ones on the roads aren't the only ones around. <laughs> Anyway, what's going on here? Adam's high school crush is getting married, so he's taken upon himself to drive across country to tell her how he feels. You gonna tell Betty Ann how you really feel? Yeah. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't at least try. And Harley's taken upon himself to provide color commentary. After all the term papers you ghost wrote for Betty Ann, and all the finals you prepped her for, she not once unclamped her knobby little knees for you. Honestly, it's kinda hard to tell who exactly is worse here. Adam's so pathetic, he was exiled from the incels and became an outcell, who's deliberately trying to destroy someone else's wedding. And Harley's a manosphere with legs, played by a manosphere with legs. Ooh, yeah. Apart from all that, Adam's fastidious, detail-obsessed, but also kind of incompetent, while Harley's a loud slob who loves needling him. You still keep her picture in your pocket. And it's laminated even, man. You are such a wussy. The Rimmer and Lister, after multiple rounds of telephone, left them obsessed with the word wussy. If I was an anthropologist 200 years in the future and I came across your car, I would still deduce that you were a wussy. <laughs> what kind of person puts one of these on their antenna? A little wussy, that's who. Okay, I'm not a little wussy. No, you're a wussy! <laughs> you're a complete wussy. <laughs> but somehow, worse off than Rimmer and Lister, because at least they have friends beyond each other. Kinda. A bit. Hey, just a minute, man. She used you. She did not 
use me. She just... That was weird. That is weird. Mostly Rob Zombie drives around at night. Mostly. They are right to be freaked out. Yeah, Satan is usually much friendlier than that. Yeah. Anyway, time for some more of that crisp 1990s style Tarantino-ish dialogue that the rest of the film is embarrassed to be seen with. You know a girl's pubic hair is really like her hood ornament? I mean, how she shaves her vagina fro says a lot about what she's got under the hood. Man, you remind me of the guy with the skull and bones, full body tattoo, caught in a crack house with his buck naked, shaved pussy, skinhead teenage girlfriend. He's got blow up his nose, needles sticking out of his arms, a cast of oozes next to his KKK propaganda and child pornography. The doors are smashed down and he's caught. He says to SWAT team, hey, it's not what you think. After a few years, her corpse will totally be rotting in the ground, but her carcass will have these perfect silicone implants still sitting on her decayed chest. Come on, don't you want to know if she's got root beer colored nipples? You and Studmeister General here have taken your male and female juices and mixed them all together into a flagrant smorgasbord of bodily soup. Vagina. Actually, maybe less Tarantino and more the dialogue that Joss Whedon wishes he could have written. Hey, this is a choice opportunity. All right, we stopped being pals over Betty Ann. No, oh, man, it's a little hard getting over being punched in the face by your best friend. You called me a liar. You called Betty Ann a slut. She is! A skank and deep throat a garden hose! To be fair, anyone can do that. It just requires practice and dedication. I mean, the hose is thinner and has much more flexibility than an erect penis. And if someone had walked in on me sucking off a garden hose, I wouldn't have had to get embarrassed and had to make up some shit about trying cannibalism. And then I had to eat that dominatrix I once dated. Oh, how she screamed. Where were we? In a very awkward place, metaphorically in the movie, and literally. You should really change the name of the room. The bitch was humping everybody but you. Look, I just didn't want you to get hurt, man. This is why I'm gonna spend the whole next scene insulting the possibly violent clientele of a local diner. <laughs> these rednecks must have an IQ the same number as my underwear size to enjoy this. How are these hillbillies ever gonna change unless someone points out how lame ass they are? Alas, this really doesn't go anywhere, but maybe that's thematic, because they spent the last four hours driving a circle. Excuse me, I'm gonna try and evacuate this scene by evil dead reference. And another thing, these things- <laughs> Wussy. I'm speechless. <laughs> well, I doubt that, but we can pretend. Oh. Honestly, I'm not sure if Harley's a concentrated effort to make the audience punch the screen, or if he really just wants to be Ron Jeremy. If it weren't for me, Dr. Maestro, sir, you wouldn't know the first thing about freestyle orifice probing. Jail time and all. Oh yeah. Anyway, today's not their day. First they pissed off Rob Zombie, and now George Miller. Anybody know what this is? It's a fuck of these! Honestly, you might just be fucked off at the substandard undercranking. Aren't we all, George? Aren't we all? Sorry, I didn't mean to flip you off, man! Anyway, point made, he and his mad maximum overdrive amble off into the wilderness. Made to look like he's going faster than he is by slightly better undercranking. <laughs> I feel like we just played Drop the Soap with Godzilla, man. Damn you. So you fuck! I love it when we don't even need to add comedy music. Oh yeah! It's time to shoot me when you time! So what's next for the dumber and dumber of horror? Stop it, Adam! Stop it! You stop it or I'm gonna fart on you! <laughs> More of the same, being twants. You gonna tell Betty Ann how you really feel? Yeah. That's nice. Before you tell Betty Ann that, you better take those tampons out of your nose. Fantastic. Stick to what you're good at. They're out of gas, so have gone looking for some at the first ominous, corpse-filled caravan that they come across. But before they arrive, Harley starts with yet another non sequitur. After a few years, her corpse will totally be rotting in the ground, but her carcass will have these perfect silicone implants still sitting on her decayed chest. This guy is like a one thing in what passes for his mind. Correction. This guy has only got two things in what passes for his mind. Perfect silicone implants still sitting on her decayed chest. 
And we have the aforementioned ominous corpse-filled caravan. It looks like someone finally got some head. <laughs> Probably went for a hike or something. I guess we could wait here until they come back. Forget that. Let's just siphon some fuel. So, did you know that Harley's mouth is the exact point where you are what you eat dovetails with talking shit? <laughs> Hey, man, that's not the gas tank, it's the septic tank. <laughs> you do? Of all the things that Harley could have been an early adopter of in 2003, you know, eBay, PayPal, rooster teeth, he had to choose Twitter. At least you finally made me laugh, right? <laughs> oh, fuck, that guy was murdered by the Crystal Gems. Oh, I think we're gonna have to kill these guys, Steven. Yay, I love helping! Later on, the filmmakers are cunningly attempting to disguise the same stretch of road by once again making the shots look like they've been seared by a heat lamp. Anyway, time for some more faux clever pop culture dialogue. Did you know that Citizen Kane is the biggest practical joke in the world? How's that? It's not a practical joke, it's trolling. I'll explain, it'll save in clip usage. Basically, Kane was based in William Randolph Hearst, who called his wife's vagina. Rosebud. And part of Citizen Kane is people trying to work out what Kane's last word Rosebud. means. In Kane, it's his sled symbolizing his childhood innocence before he became a monster. But there's a reason that Hearst tried to destroy the film. Rosebud. <laughs> Rosebud. Rosebud. This film has many grisly murders, from Ben Browder to whoever was in the caravan to the rest of them. But his most impressive murder was probably the trend for meaningless Tarantinoish reference dialogue. Now it's mostly the preserve my voiceover. I heard that. I said it at you! Rosebud! Rosebud! We did 20 ticks, and that was the best one. Rosebud! <laughs> Oh, oh, Adam, slow down. Now's your chance. Oh, this girl is made for banging. <laughs> Can you pull over? <laughs> it's not a good idea, Harley. I mean, look at her. Normal goss melt in that kind of hate. She's clearly evil. What am I saying? That's a great idea. Piss her off some more. Anyway, they still have her a toilet break and a jump scare. And most importantly, to show off of the films, finally getting the hang of using color subtle. <laughs> It's green, so he looks less obviously ill. You know, it would probably be more hygienic just to shit outside on a pile of dead coyotes. Anyway, time for that jump scare. The monster truck has somehow monster tracked them down, seeking revenge on behalf of the audience. Anyway, like I said, time for that jump scare. Hello? Hello? I see glory! Hello? <laughs> Anyway, ever sensible, Harley's decided to take the opportunity to piss in the monster's truck. What the hell are you doing? A little payback of her own, buddy! The truck has a chicken coop in the back. That might seem like a weird choice, and it kind of is, but look at the cab. You could roast a chicken on the dashboard in this heat. There's no way that he saw us. There's absolutely no way that he saw... Uh, Adam, it was that like that before we stopped at the gas station? Kind of aptly, it looks like his real vice is for crushing heads. Oh no, man. Now he knows it was us, he knows it was you who pissed in his truck! Oh man, I've been waiting my whole life to fuck up like this. Oh, commiserations! I've been waiting all film! That night, they get a motel room. Luckily, it's cheap because someone put the neon lights inside the rooms. Anyway, the trailer murders on the news, and it looks like these two have finally realized that their sex comedy indie romp thing has been firmly hijacked by a rogue horror movie. Some other homers stole the gas. I know, I know. Oh, man, this whole trip is turning into a nightmare. Now, earlier on, Adam drove past some plushy roadkill. Or to be more accurate, he slowed down, used a turn signal, and then passed the roadkill, just in case it moved, I assume. Anyway, it got picked up by the monster truck driving Monster Man for purposes of hijinks. And that's where the motel room comes in. With this Dolly Parton softcore porn, serial killer ASMR, I'm gonna get you. And doors that allow you to get in and quietly leave a carcass. <laughs> I'd be impressed with the big guy's cat leaving abilities, but these two can sleep with a neon sign in their faces. They can sleep through anything, like screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah, snatch is so wet for me, honey. You want me to lick your button? Visual pun! Visual pun! The best visual!
angel puns is reanimator! It's pussy licking good. Not the pussy he wanted or the pussy he needed, but it's the pussy he deserved. Well, let's just look on the bright side. There's a bright side? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's above you. Somehow these night shots are about as colorful as their entire cast combined. Anyway, these two's friendship is kind of like a pair of cats, unmolested hopefully, sewn into a bag and chucked into a lake. If he kills you, can I tell Betty Ann that I love her? You, want to tell her how you feel? Well, after you, of course. <laughs> You're unbelievable. I can't believe that you would stoop so low as to do what I'm doing. I don't even know who you are anymore, man. Literally. At least I finally know which of these two is worse. Harley, it's Harley, it's always Harley. Even when I thought it was that guy, I knew it was Harley. Ooh, yeah. Anyway, time to remind them of what sort of film they're actually in. <laughs> yep, an early 2000s sex comedy that's desperately trying to improve its respectability by turning into a horror movie. Whoa, relax guys, I just crashed in your car. Nice outfits. <sighs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where are you headed? Anywhere but here. And why is that? <sighs> because it's the middle of a desert surrounded by hamlets and rednecks. It's not a goth's natural habitat. Unless she's a vandal and this is 5th century Africa. One moment. And it's not. <sighs> Though in retrospect, the American accents and the cars were a bit of a giveaway. Anyway, the gothish girl is called Sarah, and she'll be a surprise villain for the film, so be surprised. See, so, yeah, he's a virgin. Huh. And you're what I call an a-hole. I like her already. Anyway, after a quick stop at what might be the most 2003 shot of the year, as in it looks like it's been ripped from a badly remastered Smash Mouth music video, I think the driver of that monster truck could be your murderer. Harley desperately tries to get the film back on rack. Boobs. Tits. Groping. A man shall never even know I felt it wrong. Harley, don't! I love the way you touch me. Dumbass honkies. I can't believe that she's more attracted to you than she is to me. I mean, that's absurd. I mean, look at you and look at me. I don't know. It sounds a bit like wondering whether you'd rather fuck a half a block of melted cheese or an onion. As in, most people could probably give you an answer, but, you know, it'd probably take a while to work out which you prefer. And would probably be a bit traumatic working that out. And why would you? Anyway, I'm glad to report that Harley's continuing to take this well. Oh, Adam. I love the way you touch me. Betty Ann didn't sleep with you because you're a wussy. I'm not a wussy. You are too. This is exactly the same landscape as a really long driving scene earlier, and equally exactly the same argument. I'm not letting you actually say it. I'm not gonna say it. I am not a little wussy. No, you're a wussy. Betty Ann didn't sleep with you because you're a wussy. I'm not a wussy. You are too. What the hell is going on? Character development? So Sarah decides on the only fair way to work out if she likes Adam or Harley more, besides just thinking about it and letting them know, kissing them both. That settles it. Adam wins. Adam wins. Smoochality. Harley takes his defeat well by vowing only to make it with car windows from now on. So, Sarah, where are you headed? Look, I don't want to talk about it. Well, let's hope you're going in the right direction then. And equally hope they don't turn their heads. Noticing the massive brush fire happening right behind them might ruin the mood. Anyway, Sarah explains that she was awake when he accidentally groped her and pretended to be dreaming about him. And then she chose him after the kissing contest, deliberately to screw with Harley. I wanted to show him that you don't have to come on so testosterone to be a man. All testosterone sounds like the only film in Guy Fieri's very short-lived porn career. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> His punishment is not done yet, though. She makes use of the fact that these two can sleep through anything to correctly label his forehead. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm just waking you up. It's Adam's turn for some shut-eye. Great idea. Put him in the front where the mirrors are. 
And we like social cues, he chooses to ignore them, and pretty soon they're in a bar. Hey! What are you staring at, a -hole? This one's unusual, though. It has its own scare chords in the jukebox. Well, that's what happens when you decide to stop in a bar called the Ableist Trope. What I like about this sequence is that the over-the-top scare chords started as soon as he saw the first guy missing an arm. So rather than a rising sense of weird dread because it's unusual that a bar in a tiny backwards hamlet would have so many amputees, he's just terrified of people with less limbs than himself. <laughs> like the dance of the lady. Wow, that is quite an outfit for a macho rando in a redneck dive bar. You heard the lady. <laughs> what? Me dancing with this girl gonna ruin your menage a trois? No, but it might fuck up their menage a hole. You know, most people would have some extra steps between being turned down for a dance and attempted rape. Let's take this dance to the back of my truck. But the film desperately needs to make him worse than Harley, so she has an excuse to do this. You see these hands? Now watch out for my foot! You just got beat up by a girl! That guy was such a dick! As in cock. Penis, phallus, purple-headed vein cane, and I should know! He's a big dick! And we Adam and Harley split up. Harley, so we can finally notice a fucking mirror. Wait, that's not how you spell aloha. Well, Adam and Sarah head to her room in order to reveal that he's an actual anime character. Oh, I'm sorry. I got a nosebleed. I've been having it since I was a kid. Which explains so much about him and his relationship with Harley, but I didn't exactly need confirmation. Oh yeah. And we like blood play aside, the segues into her showing off her wearable censorship boxes, and possibly the first Yoda fetish seen in film history. Outside of Kevin Smith's private collection, of course. Of course! Do or do not, there is no try. Huh? That's me by my size, do you? Very white and make me young Jedi. Wow. Yaddle really was a much more interesting character in the expanded universe. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. Many Star Wars fans would strenuously disagree, but that's just a theory. A Star Wars theory. <laughs> I feel the force blowing through you! Anyway, outside, it sounds like the fandom menace have some strong opinions about Star Wars intersecting with vaginas. <laughs> It's definitely not Colonel Mustard in the study with a candlestick, I'll tell you that! It's like he's trying to put an entire scene's worth of irritating dialogue in one line. And he's nearly succeeding! Oh look, the dick. What I don't understand is how the fuck they managed to hear him screaming for the next county over. Instead of building that's so far away that you can't even see in the background of this shot. And yet none of them heard the fucking monster truck. And yes sir -y, a clean hit, a perfect hit, and no pain for the target. Too bad the guy was only 38. Just two years older, he'd have been worth three times the points. Well, I guess that dick's flaccid now. You know, if he wanted a vehicular circumcision that badly, he could have just let it run over his head. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Now, they seem to be extremely screwed here, but thankfully, they have the unorthodox strategy of cutting to black and escaping in the confusion. We can't find a dang thing, let alone some dead man flattened like the coyote in some dang Roadrunner cartoon. I'm not surprised, this is a totally different location, but I can understand why they didn't want to take the cop to the right place. The monster man might still be there. My advice to you, get the hell out of my state before I put you in a place where your nicknames will be Firestone and Uniroyal. He's threatening them with prison rape until their assholes look like tires. But there was also something like drag queen names, so this threat works on two levels. They're all kind of freaked out by everything, except Sarah, because she's evil. And Harley's so far gone, he starts talking bollocks in what? Someone, I assume, thinks is English. You and Studmeister General here have taken your male and female juices and mixed them all together into a flagrant smorgasbord of bodily soup. The flagrant smorgasbord of bodily soup is on the Minions lunch menu today anyway. Yay! Well, I am the nice one. You are, mistress. We love you very much. I prefer a certain professional distance between us, Minion.
Put him on the menu for next week! <laughs> yeah. Flagrant smorgasbord. And only a local MPT is turned up to give them all that horror movie staple, crazed warnings. You are next! Well, that's what it says on your hood! Okay, so this is the film admitting that the long assimilation is concluded, and it's now a horror movie. Or, he turned up in the bar earlier on. So it's possible he was supposed to do this near the start of the film, but he was too shy and so had to get nice and blitzed first. Which certainly would help explain his performance. You are next! Demon, I did this to my arm! So I take a look-see! And I'm out! But my arm's been sawed off! I didn't fray him no more! It's like a guy was bitten by a radioactive John Turturro and does a whole career's worth of acting on one cameo. Good day, folks! Good day! It is beyond impressive that I can't tell if it's intentionally weird acting or just bad. It's like Schrodinger's cat, but slightly misspelled. Down the road a bit they stop at the most terrifying of places. Either an artist commune or a Resident Evil fan film. They stop for a meal because, what with all those scarecrows, that live bait symbolism, and with a crazy guy in a crazier truck after them, who wouldn't want to stop for a meal? You know that soda contains a lot of fructose? Well, did you know that 95% of a man's ejaculate is fructose? Well, what are you trying to say? <laughs> She's implying that you bite the wax tadpole a lot. Anyway, food's here. Okay, guys, there's nothing that a bowl of chili and a hamburger can't fix. And Adam's lucky, he got the prize. <laughs> you know, this film would be so much shorter if people were capable of noticing staff. <laughs> oh, this is not good! This is not good! I disagree, if you noticed stuff, you wouldn't suffer as much. What just happened? There were people with my chili! <laughs> Dude, looks like he just marathoned the better Police Academy movies. Hey Monica, only dogs can hear you now. <laughs> what a wonderful coincidence. As shit gets more serious, they get to a less orange part of the state. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of car. I love to know how he sees with those eyes, but to be fair, this might all just be coincidence and he thinks he's driving the redneck Le Mans. Anyway, we have a monster of a man driving a monster of a truck in a film called Monster Man. So naturally, they've been calling him Fuckface. Fuckface! And why? Because one of the dummies in the back seat noticed that his face is fucked up. This is a perfect place for old Fuckface to nail us. Fuckface? Yeah, you saw the guy. His face was totally fucked up. And that's what passes for wit when Harley's not talking about sex. Anyway, the chase ends as suddenly as it began, because they forgot to buy gas. <laughs> and Adam has a hard choice to make. Either leave his best friend a decades, the man he just rekindled his unique bond with to die, or... And he left him ages ago. Fair enough. We'd all done the same. <laughs> Oh no. Uh. He lives. Harley! Uh. I'm a corpse burrito, dude! Like yoinks, Adam! Yeah, he's still alive, but look on the bright side, they're covering him in all sorts of exciting corpse juice trying to get him out of the car. Okay, I am taking the piss out of this film. Quite rightly, it is often annoying. Definitely not Colonel Mustard in the study with a candlestick, I'll tell you that! But that shit is great. That's not green screen, they couldn't afford green screen that good. They actually drove the monster truck behind them. And if someone, <clears throat> Harley, tripped and died, we'd have an even better ending for the film! Anyway, because there's another 20 minutes or so left, they managed to avoid it with the help of the monster truck's greatest rival, a moderately sized incline. <laughs> It's a great strategy, but the time it realizes it could just drive around, they'll be half at Anchorage. Oh no, too bad he realized he can just get out of the truck. Wild. The film feels about 33% less irritating already. Man, 
getting out of the truck must have really fucked him up. I remember him walking pretty normally in the toilets. Anyway, time for the triumphant return of dodgy directing choices. <laughs> Only a model. Shh. Sarah! 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 This is one of those bits where I honestly can't tell what's a joke and what's just bad. It's better that way. Never fear, that boot left behind will help my identifier from the seven foot tall killing machine, Snow White style. Sarah! We're a fucking quick time event away from this being an unofficial heavy rain adaption. Sarah! Anyway, nice to know that the film's continuing its proud tradition of having people hear screaming from literally miles away. Wow, the Monster Man somehow gets drunker with every stamp. It's like he makes moonshine in his boots and absorbs it through his feet. Anyway, Sarah's inside the house. I'm pretty sure it's an Airbnb that once belonged to Toby Hooper. Good evening. <laughs> he just noped out of there like he was one of the smart people in a Jordan Peele film. Brother Bob! Our company has arrived! <laughs> anyway, time for me to say that obvious twist is obvious. Because the obvious twist is obvious. <laughs> so clever. But oh, so vulnerable. So vulnerable. <laughs> Welcome, friend. You're probably wondering why we brought you here. Because murder is your preferred vice? Long story, much longer than their version, because I'm going to add all sorts of embellishments. These three are siblings and spent their time being into classic cartoons and stars and Satanism and stuff. Like you do when you live out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, one day, the monster man ran his brother over and rammed into a tree, shredding his face. And then Sarah used her commoner garden Satan powers to resurrect her dead brother as this facsimile of Bill Mosley as Chop Top and Texas Chainsaw Tao. Because when coming back from the dead, it is very important to aim high. He needs fresh body parts though, and they need to come from living donors. Hence all the amputees and why it looks like he's at a concave boob job. And ever since the start of the film with the hearse, they've been setting up a new spell. One that'll let her brother swap bodies with Adam. The bodies in the trailer, the pentagram in the ground, the roadkill in the motel room, the bloody sex, evening human flesh, him spending the last few days fucking terrified, and putting the TV right where Chop Top can't see it, probably, are all ingredients in the spell. As for this guy's death... Let's take this dance to the back of my truck. You've heard of punishment and gunishment? That was runishment. You diddled my sister with that body, so when I get your body, does that mean I fucked my own sister? You didn't do it beforehand? And what does that matter, seeing as you're just gonna do it again? Does that mean I fucked my own sister? You are familiar with the thought experiment, the ship of Theseus in the field of identity metaphysics. I request elaboration. When you're all brand new, I'll do something to make that a moot point. Oh, yeah. Maybe she'll impersonate Jabba this time. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Anyway, Adam's fastidiousness finally comes in handy as he quietly used his pencil sharpener, seen here and here being all chekhov -y, to cut through his bonds and Sarah's neck. <laughs> and then, because the tiny, heavily sharpened pencil is mightier than the face, he jams it into the monster man's eyes. However, I'm a busy man and I can't be bothered to punch you at the moment. <laughs> Here's my fist, kindly run towards it as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Face. You know, some people toil in writing for a lifetime and never manage to write a line as dumb as that. And yet you manage it twice a day. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm fucking special. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely special, mistress. <laughs> 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 Not the blood I find distressing. It's your lack of subtext. Drop dead, Fred. Oh, please. Hasn't Rick Mail suffered enough? He was in Merle in the Return. Anyway, before any of these people can say Polythemus, because none of them know what that is. Fuck! 
<laughs> Sorry, but Greek is the only kind of myth head you don't look like. Eliadon finds himself alone, trapped in a house with a giant blind monster to kill him. Luckily for the scene, Adam's too much of a sport to take the break while in sharp way out. <laughs> I've got a sixth sense for blow, wussy boy. Pretty sure smell is one of the basic five. <laughs> yeah, if the scene goes on much longer, he'll die of blood loss before you can stab him. And we Adam ignores his taunts, and the fact that he looks like half of Slipknot got into a transporter accident, in order to formulate a plan. Create a trail of blood for him to follow, straight into something he can stab himself with. Seldom in my life have I met a dumber man. And when that fails, just shank the problem, motherfucker. Where's that goddamn key? Who's the wussy now? You know, he's now technically been inside all three members of that family. And with that, freedom. Freedom and being stalked. Freedom and being stalked and then saved. Harley? I keep revealing that Harley survived. I swear, it's like they want bad reviews. What exactly was he doing? Planning on ramming the house? Nah, more likely he was taking a dump before running away. Hey, I take it all back, buddy! You're not a complete wussy! Uh, at least I assume you're not dead after all. Did you kill Sarah in your berserker rage too? I am mostly kidding, but Harley doesn't even come out and ask about Sarah. And Adam doesn't mention her. They just laugh and murder celebration. Ooh, you wanna drive? <laughs> yeah! Anyway, catharsis has rarely been so thoroughly depicted as when Adam runs over the monstrous man over and over and over again until they run out of budget for the filter. Ah, uh, I think you got him! I agree. Adam's decided he doesn't give a crap about the wedding after all and they have better things to do. They go pick up chicks who aren't scared by a truck like that, don't notice dried blood, and don't ask questions like, where are your shirts? Their impossible search continues. Regardless, wise words, vagina mouth. In fact, it seems the only member of the family who can actually die is apparently the only one who has powers. I'm still alive, and I was gonna fuck my sister! In a first for me, I've been left kind of ambivalent about this film. I love parts, and I fucking hate other parts. Is it worth watching, even if you do end up hating it? Well, hell yeah, for the ridiculousness alone. But, it, but be warned, it can be really annoying. This sucks! But beyond all that, it is basically the leads of an early 2000s sex comedy wandering into a horror film. It's a unique mix, but it doesn't go quite as far with the concept as, say, deep murder where characters from a softcore porno end up in a slasher film. What if we put his blood back in him? Yeah, that's where blood lives. Inside of bodies. I know one way to get a man's blood pumping again. Oh, honey. No. But still, it is interesting and fun. I've ragged on the color grading, but it is really distracting. And it's a pity because they could have done it better. Near the end of the film, during the explanations of the rituals and stuff, we got some flashbacks with most of the colour turned right down. And that was a far better look than what they went with. Hell, they could have started with the film bright and garish, and then slowly shifted into a nuke-looking hellscape, as the horror overcame the frat comedy. Anyway, I've seen this film at least six or seven times over the years, but until scripting this review, I'd missed some genuinely clever stuff. Like this line in Sarah's reaction to it. I'm telling you, everything that has happened on this trip has happened for a reason. And all the cosmic forces are conspiring for you to meet this chick. At that moment, it looks like she's smiling because she's been listening to their conversation and likes Adam. Or because she thinks they're funny or worked at her plan to fuck with Harley. But on re-watching... Or in my case, re 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 watching It's clear that she's finding the whole thing ironic. She planned all this out, and then this dickhead thinks it's fate. Anyway, all the performances were strong, they did what they were supposed to do, be varying degrees of irritating, funny, threatening, and or sexy, and outside of the genuinely weird bits, the directing is mostly solid. 
Honestly, it kind of reminds me of the babysitter films, with the unique mix of irritating and amazing. It does what it wants to do, and I respect that. Anyway, I'm Demon Hagen, and I have to live with that every day. Mm -hmm.